Welcome to our second lesson on ellipses. Today, we'll work on ellipses that are not centered at the origin. At the start of your lesson, you had the pre-video activity, Shifting Centers. If you haven't had a chance to work on it yet, pause the video to do that now. Let's check your work. From the graph, we can quickly see this ellipse has a horizontal major axis, vertices at negative 17, 3, and 9, 3, and covertices at negative 4, 8, and negative 4, negative 2. What about its center? Is this ellipse centered at the origin as usual? If we find the middle between the vertices and the covertices, we find that the center is at negative 4, 3. Plotting the center helps us see we have a major radius of 13 and a minor radius of 5. To find the foci, we use this equation to find that c equals 12, which means our foci are 12 units from the center, landing them at negative 16, 3, and 8, 3. Now that we have all the features of this ellipse, let's think about how we'd write its equation. Well, if the ellipse were centered at the origin, then from the previous lesson, we know we would just need to replace the values of a and b in the standard form for a horizontally oriented ellipse with 13 and 5. Doing that, we find it results in x squared over 169 plus y squared over 25 equals 1. Could this ellipse centered at the origin help us find the equation of our actual ellipse centered at negative 4, 3? How are these two ellipses related? Well, they are the exact same ellipse, but in different places. More precisely, if we translate the ellipse centered at the origin 3 units up and 4 units left, we get our ellipse with center negative 4, 3. Do you remember how we can represent these translations algebraically? Just like with circles and parabolas, we can translate ellipses horizontally by adding or subtracting to the x, and we can translate vertically by adding or subtracting to the y. In this particular case, to shift the ellipse 4 units left, we add 4 to x, and to shift it 3 units up, we subtract 3 to the y. In general, we can take the equations for ellipses centered at the origin we learned in our previous lesson and simply translate them to any center, hk, by subtracting h from x and k from y. Let's look at another ellipse that is not centered at the origin. But this time, we'll start off with its equation in general form. 16x squared plus 9y squared minus 160x plus 36y plus 292 equals 0. We are asked to rewrite the equation of the ellipse in standard form, and then complete the table with its features and its graph. Recall from previous lessons that all conic sections can be written in this general form. However, we need the equation in standard form to be able to identify the features and graph it. How can we rewrite this equation from general form into standard form? Notice how the standard forms have the x and the y contained in perfect squares. Therefore, we can convert this equation into standard form by completing the square. In essence, we'll work toward writing this equation into a sum of two perfect square terms equal to 1, which is the format of the standard forms. Even though we've done this process before with circles and parabolas, with ellipses, we'll end up with fractional terms in the standard form, which adds a few steps to the completing the square process. Let's work this one out together step by step. First, Let's make sure our equation is organized as x terms plus y terms equals a constant. 
To do that, we can just do some reordering on the left side and subtract 292 on both sides. Our next step is key. Let's factor out the leading coefficient from the x terms and the leading coefficient from the y terms. The leading coefficient of the x terms is 16, and for the y terms, it is 9. Notice that we're leaving a space in each pair of parentheses for the constants we'll add to complete the squares, which is our third step. Let's complete the square first for x, focusing only on this first quadratic expression in parentheses. Since half of negative 10 is negative 5 and negative 5 squared is 25, adding 25 will complete the square. However, if I want to add this 25 here on the left side, how do I make sure the equation stays balanced? Do I just add a 25 on the right side? Well, are we sure we added just 25 on the left side? We added this 25 inside parentheses that are being multiplied by 16. We actually added 25 times 16, which is 400. Therefore, to balance adding 400 on the left side, we also add 400 on the right side. Now it's your turn to complete the square, but with y. Pause the video now and give it a shot. We complete the square by adding 4 inside the parentheses. However, what is this 4 actually adding on the left side of the equation? We're adding 9 times 4, which is 36, so we add 36 on the right side too. Now, let's factor these perfect square trinomials as squared binomials. The first square is just the result of x minus 5 times x minus 5, so we can write it as x minus 5 squared. And let's not forget the 16. Similarly, the second square is y plus 2 squared with the 9 in front. We can also simplify the right side of the equation by adding up negative 292 plus 400 plus 36, which gives us 144. Now that the squares are completed, what's the only step left to do to get this equation into standard form? Since we need a 1 on the right side, we divide both sides by the constant term. In this case, we divide by 144 and then simplify the fractions. Our standard form becomes x minus 5 squared over 9 plus y plus 2 squared over 16 equals 1. We did it! Let's add this equation to our table. With the standard form, we can now get all the features of this ellipse. In your guided notes, complete the table with all the features of the ellipse and then graph it. Then, we'll check your work together. Pause the video now. We can see this ellipse is not centered at the origin, since it is translated 5 units right and 2 units down. Therefore, the center is 5, negative 2. Since the larger denominator is 16, and it happens under y, we know this is a vertically oriented ellipse with major radius 4, which means the vertices will be 4 units up and down from the center, landing them at 5, negative 6, and 5, 2. Since 9 is the smaller denominator, the minor radius is 3, landing our co-vertices 3 units left and right of the center at 2, negative 2, and 8, negative 2. With our vertices and co-vertices plotted, we connect them and get the graph of our ellipse. Lastly, we use a and b to find c, which is equal to square root of 7. We can approximate this number to around 2.6 to locate the foci accurately on the graph, but let's write our foci in exact radical form. 5, negative 2 minus square root of 7, and 5, negative 2 plus square root of 7. 
Today, we learned how to write the equations in standard form for an ellipse with any center h, k. We saw how these equations resulted from simply translating the equations for an ellipse centered at the origin. We also learned that to rewrite from general form to standard form, we use the process of completing the square. Once you've finished your guided notes, complete the additional practice. After that, make sure to complete the online practice. See you next time! Hey, hey.